Gwydion. Gwydion. Gwydion, what are you doing, boy? I was... just... looking. How dare you take leave of your duties? Resume your chores immediately. Yes, Mananin. Master. Had your parents survived your wretched infancy? The sight of your sloth alone would have killed them. They would not have been proud of me. No, but fate has favored you. Few orphaned youths can know such fortune. You are lucky to be here to serve me. I am very lucky. Indeed. Now get to work. Such is the story of young Gwydion's life to this point. What's a poor boy to do? Oh well, in resignation, Gwydion obediently follows Mananan into the house. This is Mananan's detestable pet. The old wizard looks at you menacingly. My office needs dusting. Attend to it now. The cat just hisses at you. You are not close enough. You are not... Nimbly, you grab the nasty cat by the scruff of its neck, avoiding its needle-sharp claws. And now that you have it, what are you going to do with it? You manage to pluck some fur before he viciously scratches and leaps from your arms. With grim satisfaction, you survey your wounds. The massive desk is made from oak. The wizard does all his reading, writing, and arithmetic here. You are not sure, but it could be a chart. Then again, perhaps not. So many books line the bookshelf, you wonder when Mananan has time to read them all. Titles cover many subjects from ancient Arabic mythology to a study of the heavens to the philosophies of Socrates. It's your feather duster.
You'll create no magic around me, Quidian. Looks like you were caught red-handed. You scrutinize the moose head carefully. While it is long past its grazing days, you feel sorry for the poor old thing. A tin cup has been left on the table. Mananan was not pleased to be served blackroot juice in anything other than his chalice heirloom. The perfect servant, aren't you? A leftover piece of mutton. A loaf of bread, freshly baked. An apple and some grapes grace the kitchen table. You take the fruit and carry it with you. You take the loaf of bread and carry it with you. You take the mutton chop and carry it with you. It's just your old tin bucket. There are drying herbs and spices hanging here. Your wooden serving spoon is hanging on the rack. This is the kitchen of the wizard's house. Other than your own bedchamber, this is the only place in the house that you feel you can call your own. The wizard rarely enters the kitchen. On cold days, the fireplace is a cozy place to sit. Your trusty knife is hanging on the rack. Your mixing bowl is lying on the shelf. You take the wooden spoon from the iron rack and keep it with you. You take the carving knife from the iron rack and keep it with you. You retrieve the clay bowl from the kitchen shelf and take it with you. You have always admired this lovely tapestry. It's one of the few bright spots in this dreary house. The wizard gives you an evil glare.
The well-polished brass telescope is used by Mananan to keep tabs on the citizens of Ludor. You put your eye to the glass. It amazes you how near everything seems. You could even see squirrels climbing faraway trees. No wonder the wizard knows of all activities in Ludor. The wizard's glare makes you suddenly feel very, very small. I have decided to take a journey. It's a fly and it's dead. You pick up the dead fly and drop it into your hand. Disgustedly, you look at it. There is a small drawer in the front of the mahogany vanity. You have excellent eyesight. Besides, they wouldn't suit you. So far, you're allergy-free. Perhaps in a few years, when you've worn out that soft down presently posing as stubble. Your breath smells fine. You take the wizard's hand mirror. There is nothing of interest in that part of the drawer. You've only been fed slop in your life. Bit late to be starting on crunchy food. They're of no use to you. You don't have a problem with heights. Not one you'd admit to. You've never wanted to smell like a rose, but... You search the pockets of the black cloak. Suddenly you discover a small brass key. What could it unlock? You search behind the clothes hanging in the wizard's closet. You're startled to discover an ancient parchment scroll. Its ink has faded, but it seems to be a map. Taking this treasure, you leave everything else exactly as it was. The hatch is home for the hens and comes complete with a supply of chicken feed. You pick up the chicken. 
you gently pluck a feather from the chicken and gently set it back on the ground. There is no answer. There are bowls of porridge on the table, a far cry from the fish, honey, and berries you're expecting. Just right, so you take it with you. Closely examine the contents of the drawer. As handy as a small bottle may be in other games, you see no use for it in this one. Your clothes may be in need of repair, but you hardly have the time to worry about such things. Your clothes may be in need of... You pick up the thimble. There is... Your hands are... What a beautiful garden, you think. The residents must take great care of it. Dew has formed on the petals from the night before. Holding the silver thimble beneath a dew-filled flower, you gently tip the flower so its dew runs into the thimble. You move from flower to flower, repeating the process until your thimble is brimming with dew. You take a handful of fertile soil from the garden. The trunk is home to a fair few bees. You scoop up a small handful of sand.
The acorns surround the old oak tree and crunch under your step. You pick and poke among the fallen acorns looking for dried ones. You eventually find three dried acorns and take them with you. Catch of the day's reject, the seagull feasts on its latest lunch. A sign above the store reads, General Store. Good day to you, young man. What can I do for you? A content, hairy dog sits on the floor of the store. Its name tag reads, Hank. You pat the hairy dog and are rewarded with a handful of malted hair. The mistletoe hangs from the branches of the tree. There are few dried sprigs mingled with the green mistletoe. You search among the hanging mistletoe until you find a sprig that has dried. You break it off and carry it with you. You can see more town buildings further to the north. Once the pride of the town, the library is now a forgotten shell. Boxes have been stacked along the side wall. Despite the fact that the window is ajar, it will not open wide enough to allow entry. There's a small brass latch on the inside, which your fingertips cannot quite reach. You slide the knife's thin blade through the gap and easily flip the latch. It is closed. This book has been left more recently, as in the last 20 years. The book from the library looks similar to the books that line the shelves of Mananan's study. The book from 
this item. The rest of the pages are blank. It's peaceful here. You kneel and scoop some of the mud onto the wooden spoon.
Like a great blue barrier, the ocean obstructs you. You scoop up a cupful of ocean water. The metal cup has ocean water in it. The fruit consists of an apple and some grapes. They look sweet, fresh, and juicy. Mmm, you love the smell of freshly baked bread. This is a leftover mutton chop that the old wizard hadn't finished. It still looks appetizing, though. The knife is big enough and sharp enough to carve a large roast. The spoonful of mud has already dried. The clay bowl has been your favorite bowl for years. You're not certain why you're carrying around something as disgusting as a dead fly. The magic map's faded ink has brightened in certain spots, depicting locations in Ludor. The small brass key is bright. The little vial of rose petal essence has a delicate, sweet aroma. The mirror is set in a round oak frame with a long handle. You peer into it and see your rather dirty but handsome face. You're carrying a handful of fertile soil from the Bear family's garden. The dew sparkles within the little silver thimble. The warm porridge is in a pretty blue ceramic bowl. Its aroma wafts up to and tantalizes your nose. The chicken feather is small and light, no more than a piece of fluff. The wad of dog hair is dirty white and brown. The fish must have been on dry land for a considerable amount of time already, as its aroma is less than desirable. The three acorns are dry and brittle. You're carrying a handful of sand from the desert. The dried sprig of mistletoe is a thick grayish green with remnants of little berries still attached. It is not a pretty plant. You feel strange knowing your predecessor left this and that a later Gwydion might find it. You pull out your magic map. You feel a strange pulling sensation. It's a painting of the wizard from long ago. You wonder if he was ever young. You are not close. The despicable cat slips away from your grasp with a fierce scratch to your arm. You are not cl you are not you are nimbly you grab the nasty cat by the scruff of its neck avoiding its needle sharp claws now that you have it what are you going to do with it you manage to pluck some fur before he viciously scratches and leaps from your arms with grim satisfaction you survey your wounds You 
drop to your hands and knees and hide the item under your bed. You see an evil sneer come across the wizard's face. I am hungry. Prepare me a meal at once. Mananan is impatiently waiting for his food. His stomach rumbles as he drums his gnarled fingers on the table. You'd better feed him quickly, or dire consequences may result. Your lord and master keeps a cold eye on you when he's not watching everyone else. Uh... Master? What is it? Speak quickly, boy. What are the people of Ludor like? The wizard gives you a cautionary glance. Why? Intending to make their acquaintance, are you? No. I'm just curious. From what you have said in the past, they don't sound very appreciative of you. Selfish, pathetic creatures requiring constant vigilance. They should have some respect for an old man. It tires me keeping track of their movements, never knowing when one might put a foot out of line. You have the strangest notion that Mananin's last comment was not an expression. They sound wretched. Much like yourself, but they are punished for their disobedience as surely as you are. Your heart skips as the wizard gives you an evil look. I am going to lie down for a rest. Do not disturb me.
Dropping to your hands and knees, you reach under the bed and retrieve all of your possessions. The oak cabinet has a brass handle on its door. Your feather duster is lying on its top. You unlock the oak cabinet using the brass key. It's the wizard's magic wand. Inside, you find the wizard's magic wand. You take it with you, knowing it could mean death if he finds it missing. The cabinet door locks as you shut it. You feel You quickly pull the levers in the correct sequence. Every surface is dust free. You may not like what you do, but you do it well. You quickly pull the levers in the correct sequence. You look in awe around this torchlit underground room. It appears to be a laboratory, a wizard's laboratory. The shelves are filled with numerous items. Most of the bottles are unmarked. There are a few things that interest you though. You pick up the bottle labeled nightshade juice and take it with you. You pick up the bottle labeled Toadstool Powder and take it with you. You pick up the bottle labeled Saffron and take it with you. You pick up the bottle labeled Toad Spittle and take it with you. You pick up the empty flask and take it with you. Most of the bottles are... Most of the bottles... The shelves are filled with the shelf, the shell. This bottle is labeled ground fish scales. 
you pick up the bottle labeled ground fish scales and take it with you. Atop the oak table are a large leather-bound book, a mortar and pestle, a little brazier holding charcoal, a flint, measuring cups, beakers, flasks, and stirrers. You take a closer look at the wizard's work table. Covered with gold trimmings, the old book's leather cover is cracked and worn, its pages yellowed and brittle. The title, however, is clear. The Sorcery of Old. You eagerly thumb through page after page of what you assume to be magic formulas. The ink of the old handwriting is faint and barely readable. Most of the formulas are indecipherable, but a few are in a language you know. You treat the old book with great care, as you can tell it contains recipes for some very old and powerful magic spells. Your hands shake as you realize this book could be the key to your escape from the evil Mananan. You shouldn't try making up your own spells. Atop the oak tip, you take a cloak covered with gold. You eat most of the nightshade inside the jar. You see the saffron, an orange yellow powdery substance. You add a pinch of saffron to the vial marked Rose Petal Essence. With trepidation, you prepare to recite the Flying Like an Eagle or a Fly incantation. Spirits of air, cloud and breeze, lend me your wings that I may seize. The opportunity to fly, allow me passage through the sky. You wave the magic wand over the vial of rose petal essence. You look at Manana. You shouldn't try making up your own spells. You look at Manannan's spell book. You pour the cup of ocean water into the bowl. You light the charcoal brazier. You place the bowl of ocean water on the charcoal brazier. 
you remove the bowl before it starts to boil. The spoonful of mud has already dried. You add a spoonful of mud to the bowl. The cream-colored toadstool powder is finely textured and nearly odorless. The cream You add the toadstool powder to the bowl. You save the empty jar for reuse. You blow into the steaming bowl. With trepidation, you prepare to recite the Brewing a Storm incantation. From nature, I now call on thee, the power of the land and sea. When brew is stirred, all should be warned, the might of the approaching storm. You wave the magic wand over the bowl. You carefully pour the storm brew into the empty jar. The charcoal brazier burns out. You quickly pull the levers in the correct sequence. You try to turn the handle, but the door... You unlock the oak cabinet using the brass key. You carefully replace the magic wand exactly as you found it. The cabinet door locks as you shut it. It's an eagle's feather. You pull out your magic map. You feel a strange pulling sensation. It's just an empty container. You could put something inside it. You fill the flask with ocean water.
The only life left in this cave is a lone mandrake root. The strange woman stands before you expectantly. Her ageless face is tranquil, but there's faint urgency behind her gaze. Welcome, young one. I saw you through the telescope, but it was a dream. Neither dreaming nor awake, yet it was I you saw. Who are you? You may think of me as an oracle. Beyond that lies knowledge I cannot impart. A better question for you to ask is, who am I? I do not understand. Do you know your identity? Your ancestry? Your heritage? My name is Gwydion, a servant to the wizard Mananin, and I have lived in Ludor all my life. As for my parents, I have never known them. Mananin told me that they died when I was very young. Yes. Too young to remember. Too small to resist. I don't understand. A lie lurks in shadow and gives way to the luminance of truth. The time has come for your enlightenment. Hello? Where am I? These are but visions of light long faded. Observe what you may, but the time of influence has passed. The nursery is sparsely furnished, allowing for ample crawling space. You have never seen such a place, but hope you will again before long. The child of the cradle stirs as if the air has become too cold for him you wonder if you could stand a closer look. Mananin. I thank the father for this timely gift. No! That was... I was that boy. Mananan abducted me. Everything he told me was a lie. I need to know more. Tell me. Then speak, my child. Ask. My name? Do I have a name? Other than the one Mananan gave me, I mean? Your name is Alexander. Prince Alexander. You are heir to your father's throne. My father is a king? Yes, a very good and noble one. It may come to pass that you shall meet him. Where do I come from? You hail from the kingdom of Daventry. Once, it was a place of great beauty. Oldest is the magic that lies deep within that realm, and the earliest histories are connected to it. An important part of it is to play in great events to come, but this should not concern you. The land has suffered much in recent times, and must be healed. Why must the land be healed? Great misfortunes have plagued Daventry since the arrival of the Three-Headed Dragon. Each year it demands a sacrifice in exchange for sparing the land from its fiery wrath. At first, the king refused. And now, years later, the land burns still from the dragon's flame. How may it be healed? The power to do so can be found in a place 
once linked to the greater land. You will come to it in time, where your value shall be measured by the way you measure value. Come again? You will know when it is time to know. Why does the king do nothing? There was a time when the king would have risked all to save another. Now, he has barely the spark of life within him. The years have been hard for the royal family. Grief has taken its toll, and the king has borne the brunt of the anguish. Now, with the dragon holding the kingdom's future in its fiery jaws, he has not the spirit to fight the evil. The curse endures still. Curse? It is beyond what is yours to reckon with. Concern yourself not with it. Who are my family? You are the son of Graham and Valanis, and the twin brother of Rosella, who is even now in great peril. A sister? In peril, did you say? The dragon came and took nest upon the highest summit. From there, it receives its dues. Lately, its price is the highest yet. Rosella? Yes, she is to be the next sacrifice. Go now, Prince Alexander. Deal with your enslaver, and venture forth to aid your family at a time they need you most. Thank you, Oracle. A waterfall cascades from the snowless mountain, evidence that Mananan occasionally has good moods. You see stray boulders from the mountain lying around. This cactus is of a spineless variety. A snake has shed its skin and left it in the desert sun. You retrieve the dried snake skin from the hot desert sand. It's delicate and could easily crumble.
An ancient door has been set into the cliff face. You don't see that every day. Your eyes adjust to the dark as you struggle to breathe the putrid air. What is this place? Who comes to my den? Just a man. Man? I have known many called man. All wretched. All deceitful. Now, all stone. As a man, you are not capable of honesty, of truth. But I am. As a man, you exist only to break a woman's heart. Shallowness and fear are your bane. Come closer, and I will destroy you. If you would look upon me, foolish boy, then reveal your true self. How? Oh. Hear me in earnest and respond in kind. A blind man asks you to describe the sunset. Poor girl offers to sell you a rotten apple from her basket. A harem slave asks for help. Her master will beat her once he learns of her escape. She offers her services. An old man who reeks of the world's worst stitches asks for shelter. After many years of correspondence with the lady, you propose. Upon meeting her in person, she is far less attractive than she described. Repelled by me? You are not transformed. The enchantment is broken. Forgive me. I have been too hasty in appraising you. It would seem that I possess something of the hard heartedness I accused you of having. Considering my predecessors, I think your opinion was understandable. How can I thank you? A perfectly smooth, uniquely colored stone sits upon a natural pedestal. If it would please you, I would have this unique stone. It would, though I am loath to ask. I would have you first do a favor for me. Certainly. I have all but forgotten my own appearance, and I should dare not enter the town again until I am made more gentle to the eye. Assuredly, you would make not even the most dazzling sunrise more attractive to the senses. I thank thee for the compliment. However, I still desire a means to appraise myself. I have none. 
for once transformed into a gorgon, all were destroyed in my terrible rage. Bring me a looking glass, and I will gladly grant you the stone. I will do as you ask, my lady. I am most grateful to you. You may have the stone if that is your will. Thank you, my lady. You take the smooth stone. Farewell, my lady. Farewell, good sir. Yet before we part, I wish to make mention of something I have sensed in your aura. Whatever wretched life you have thus far lived, I feel a great change encroaching upon you soon. For good or ill, I know not. Heed well my advice. Beware those who would offer help, particularly if such should bear a price. I thank you, my lady. You pull out your mat. You feel a strange. You'll create no magic around me, Quidian. Looks like you were caught red-handed. You pull out your... You feel a strange... Mananan eyes you with a snaggle-toothed sneer. 
I am ravenous. Fix me something immediately. Mananan is impatiently waiting for his food. 